In the sun-scorched Taklamakan Desert, an extraordinary story is unfolding, one that could change how we feed the world. Amidst endless dunes where temperatures soar and water is scarce, thousands of fish are being farmed in man-made ponds. This isn't a mirage or a small experiment, it's a full-scale operation that could revolutionize global agriculture. With the global population nearing 10 billion and arable land shrinking, the challenge of feeding everyone is more urgent than ever. Traditional farming is reaching its limits, and innovation is critical. What's happening in the Chinese desert is more than a local success. It's a bold attempt to turn one of Earth's harshest environments into a source of sustainable protein. If fish can thrive here, what other impossible feats might be within reach? This could be a blueprint for arid nations worldwide, challenging the very geography of food production. Imagine future farms not in lush valleys but in the wastelands we once dismissed. Tonight we take you to the front lines of this agricultural revolution. We'll explore the science, the scale, and the consequences of farming fish in the desert. Meet the engineers behind the project and the experts weighing its promise and risks. This is a story of ingenuity and ambition, of turning the desert into a source of hope. It all began with a radical idea. What if the desert could feed the world? To grasp the scale of this achievement, you must first understand the land. The Taklamakan is one of the world's largest, harshest deserts. Its name means go in and you may never come out. For centuries, life here meant clinging to the edges, relying on ancient irrigation to create small oases for hardy crops. Water was always scarce, the soil saline and hostile, and the threat of the desert ever-present. Large-scale agriculture was unthinkable. The region's groundwater is often too salty for crops, and rainfall vanishes almost instantly. For decades, China has tried to hold back the desert with massive tree planting projects with mixed results. Against this backdrop, the idea of fish farming seemed absurd, but instead of fighting the desert, innovators saw potential in its saline groundwater. The new approach harnessed the desert's challenges and turned them into assets. This isn't just about survival, it's about reimagining what's possible in a place long defined by its limits. The desert, once a symbol of scarcity, is now being transformed into a hub of abundance. It's a paradigm shift in how we think about food and land. The secret to desert fish farming is a paradox. The desert has water, but it's salty and long considered useless. Deep beneath the Taklamakan lies a vast saline aquifer, once an obstacle, now an opportunity. Instead of costly desalination, scientists asked, what if we farmed saltwater fish? In the early 2010s, researchers began experimenting with brackish groundwater for aquaculture. They identified hardy species like tilapia and shrimp that could survive the unique mineral mix. Early trials were small and challenging, but gradually the techniques improved. The breakthrough was creating a closed-loop system that used the saline water productively without harming the environment. Years of research into water chemistry, fish biology, and sustainable engineering followed. The result? A system where desert water became the perfect medium for a new kind of farm. This wasn't just adaptation, it was a leap forward in agricultural thinking. By the late 2010s, the proof of concept was clear. The desert's unusable water was now a resource for food production. A new era of aquaculture had begun, right in the heart of the wasteland. Desert fish farming is a feat of engineering, biology, and innovation. It starts with drilling deep wells to access the underground saline water, which is pumped into massive, lined ponds. Advanced geomembranes prevent contamination, keeping the operation contained and sustainable. Sensors monitor pH, oxygen, temperature, and salinity, feeding data to a central control system. Automated aerators and circulation systems maintain ideal conditions for the fish, 24 sevenths. Scientists introduce phytoplankton and zooplankton, creating a natural food web that stabilizes the ecosystem and reduces the need for artificial feed. Wastewater isn't discarded, it's cycled through hydroponic systems to grow salt-tolerant crops like salicornia. This integrated approach called integrated multi-trophic aquaculture turns waste into value and maximizes every drop of water. The result is a circular symbiotic system that mimics nature and boosts sustainability. Nothing is wasted, every resource is used to its fullest. This is precision agriculture, reimagined for the desert. The technology is not just innovative, it's transformative. It's a model for sustainable food production in the harshest environments. What began as small experiments has become a major commercial enterprise in Xinjiang, near the Taklamakan. Today, 
Thousands of acres of desert have been transformed into grids of blue ponds, visible from space. In 2024 alone, these farms produced thousands of tons of seafood, barramundi, tilapia, and shrimp. One facility near Kashgar now produces over 5,000 tons of seafood annually, aiming to double that soon. This is industrial-scale food production, not a boutique project. The psychological shift is profound. Locals who once saw the land as cursed now help raise fish in the desert. The farms are creating jobs and new livelihoods in a region long plagued by economic hardship. Investment has reached hundreds of millions of dollars with both government and private backing. Fresh seafood, once rare inland, is now accessible and affordable. Trucks loaded with fish and shrimp now depart daily, feeding markets across China. Desert aquaculture is transforming local economies and communities. The farms provide stable jobs for engineers, biologists, and laborers, boosting incomes and supporting families. New businesses, logistics, packaging, equipment maintenance are springing up, multiplying the economic impact. By producing seafood locally, the region reduces reliance on costly imports and keeps more money circulating at home. Socially, the availability of fresh, affordable protein is improving public health and nutrition. Schools and institutions are adding local fish to their menus, diversifying diets. Yet challenges remain, ensuring local communities, including Uyghurs, are not just laborers but stakeholders in this new economy. Training and equitable benefit sharing are crucial for long-term success. The transformation is real, but it must be inclusive and sustainable. Desert fish farming is central to China's national strategy for food security. With over 1.4 billion people and limited farmland, self-sufficiency is a top priority. President Xi Jinping's call to keep the rice bowl in Chinese hands is answered by projects like this. The initiative also boosts China's image as a leader in agricultural technology, offering a model for other arid nations. It's a tool for regional development and stability in Xinjiang, creating jobs and raising living standards. The government's heavy investment and policy support reflect its strategic importance. This is not just a market-driven phenomenon, it's a state-backed mission. The rewards, food security, technological leadership, and regional stability are seen as vital to national interests. Desert fish farms are a high-tech pillar of China's 21 St. Century strategy. To assess the long-term prospects, we turn to Dr. Evelyn Reed, a sustainability expert. She calls the project a remarkable feat. Turning saline groundwater into protein is a potential game-changer. But she cautions, the energy demands are immense, and much of it currently comes from fossil fuels. Solving food scarcity could worsen climate problems unless renewable energy is used. Dr. Reed also warns about the ecological risks of tapping ancient aquifers. What's the recharge rate? Could overuse cause land subsidence or other issues? The use of liners helps, but long-term management is critical. She urges transparent environmental assessments and a commitment to renewables. The technology is brilliant, but true sustainability depends on responsible implementation. This could be a blueprint for other arid regions, but only if it's circular, energy efficient, and ecologically sound. The world should watch and learn from both the successes and the challenges. Innovation alone isn't enough. Stewardship is essential. The desert experiment is bold but its legacy will depend on how wisely it's managed. China's desert fish farms are a glimpse into the future of food on a changing planet. They show how human ingenuity can turn even the harshest environments into sources of hope and sustenance. This project challenges our assumptions about where food can be grown and what's possible. It offers a model for food security and economic growth in arid regions worldwide, but the promise comes with responsibility. Energy use, aquifer health, and social equity must be addressed. The true measure of success isn't just tons of fish, but lasting, sustainable prosperity. As we look ahead, the lesson is clear. We must be bold, innovative, and wise. The shimmering ponds in the Taklamakan are more than farms. They're a reflection of our choices. They ask us to consider not just what's possible but what's wise. The future of agriculture is being written today in the desert's shifting sands. Our challenge is to ensure it grows on sustainable ground. The story of desert aquaculture is still unfolding. Its outcome will shape how we feed the world for generations to come.